Let's go ahead and turn to a new report that is trending right now on Twitter uh, about slavery. Yeah, it's not so much a thing of the past at all, but a very real part of modern day. That's according to a recent report released by the United Nations. An estimated 50 million people worldwide are living as modern day slaves. Now, this marks an increase of nearly 9 million people enslaved since 2016. Here's a chart there that illustrates the rise. Because according to the UN, they define modern slavery as forced labor or forced marriage. And it's far more common than you think. Modern slavery consists of 27.6 million people, including 3.3 million children, enduring forced labor and 22 million people in forced marriage. The report found that more than half of all forced labor occurred in upper middle income or high income countries. Migrants were three times more likely to be involved in forced labor than adult non-migrant workers. Four out of five people in forced commercial sexual exploitation were women and girls. That's right. They saying countries in which uh, there is a high amount of income, like the United States, are where it's more likely to occur. So let's not think this isn't going on in our own backyard. And as far as the background on these forced marriages, Axios says this. More than two thirds of people forced to marry against their will were women and girls. And the vast majority of forced marriages were arranged by family members. 26% of forced marriages occurred in high or upper middle income countries, while roughly 60% of people forced into marriage lived in lower middle income countries. Again, this is stuff going on in our own backyard. Now, why has there been such an increase since 2016? Well, here are some of the possible contributing factors. Overlapping crises from the COVID-19 pandemic to climate change to armed conflicts have caused unpre unprecedented disruption to employment and education and increased extreme poverty, unsafe migration, and gender-based violence, leading to a heightened risk of modern slavery, according to the report. Now, the UN also says that uh, in order to fix this or even address it, we really need governments to step up. Uh, also, we need trade unions, employer organizations, and just all around protection of civil rights. And as far as I'm concerned, also, um, you know, making education mandatory when it comes to women, girls having access to it. Uh, because oftentimes we'll see when it comes to child marriages, at least, that the first thing is, is that they're taken out of school. These things are happening and they're happening all around us and they're not OK. Jessica. Let's not forget that slavery is, is legal in the United States. The 13th Amendment clearly states that slavery is illegal except as punishment for a crime. And we have a huge for-profit prison system in the United States. But I do really like the definition given by the United Nations and the International Labor Organization here, uh, calling it forced labor. Uh, and given the number of 27.6 million people, by their definition, I'm not sure actually how they've worked out these numbers. Because when I think about forced labor and the quotes that you've shared there, I think, okay, in the United States, you've got to go to work and sell your labor to someone else who's going to give you a wage that is oftentimes far less than what you would need to cover housing, to cover food costs, healthcare costs, provide for your family even. And so you've got to work for much longer hours than many people deem reasonable. Where do you draw the line there for what is slavery and what is not? If your choice is to work for 70 hours per week or not have a home, not have food, not have health care, that's forced labor as far as I'm concerned. That is a version of slavery. So I'm a little bit perplexed as to why the number's so low if this is their definition of slavery. But I totally agree with their proposed solutions, more unionization, because we know that our elected officials in this country are not going to do anything about this. They've had plenty of opportunities to make legislation, to regulate corporations, to increase public services given to our social safety nets. Instead, they're funding the military industrial complex and giving a ton of federal money, public money, to defense contractors. Those, those dollars should be going to programs so that people can survive. They can continue to have housing. They can continue to have food. They can have health care. Instead, what we've got is people being forced to do labor to survive. And we're seeing huge profit margins, especially during the pandemic, where people are capitalizing on those of us who are stuck at home. Many people started ordering things online. We saw Amazon start making record profits while people were dying in warehouses. The people working in those warehouses are living under slave-like conditions. And let's not forget the racial dynamics within the warehouses. You've got bosses 
who are majority white looking over workers who are majority black. And so when we talk about slavery being forced labor, I like their definition, but I would argue the number is likely higher. No, I think the number would definitely be higher if it were more accurate of a reading. But I also think that the UN is plugged in just like a lot of other uh, global entities that they don't necessarily want to call out uh, the wealthy to the extent that they can avoid doing it. Because uh, just as you uh, so aptly explained, it would be so many more people if they truly were to decide that slavery and the definition of it uh, was so much broader, but they can't afford to do that. So they're going to limit it in that regard because it makes it all more palatable. Yeah, Ugh. such a good point. I would you know, point to also the amount of money the United States spends on defense and being such a huge military power that gives them outsized influence on what's going on in the international arena and definitely outsized influence over the work of the United Nations. As much as they want to fight for human rights and be impartial as an organization, when the United States is the most powerful actor in the United Nations, they can't really do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. But we know uh, it's all capitalism and <laughs> keeping it happy.